run you through Zscaler Private Access and DNS resolution, and then um, apply this uh, resolution uh, functionality to how uh, Microsoft's Active Directory functions, and how to troubleshoot problems with um, uh, group policy update and things that go alongside that. So to start off with, um, just build a bit of a, uh, a diagram in terms of um, how Active Directory might function. Um, so, so here um, we've got um, Zscaler data centers. We've got data center in Paris, New York, London, Sydney. Uh, and customer has um, connectors deployed in New York, London, and Sydney, and Active Directory in New York, London, and Sydney. Um, what's important to understand from an Active Directory perspective is this concept of sites. An, an Active Directory site, uh, for example, New York, is defined as being um, all of the uh, subnets that are within New York. Uh, London is defined as all of the subnets within London. Sydney is defined as all of the, the subnets within Sydney. So if I was physically in this network, um, and I queried Active Directory to ask which domain controller can authenticate me, which um, domain controller is going to give me my group policy, because I'm in the network of New York, um, my DNS response will point me at, um, at the, D the, the, the New York um, Active Directory server. And if I then got on a, on a plane and I flew to London, my workstation would start up, I would say, ah, oh, right, where should I go to get my group policy? Well, the last thing I knew about was New York. So it'll talk to New York and say, hey, um, can you give me my group policy? But the New York domain controller will say, hey, your IP address is now in London, and it'll redirect you to the London domain controller to process your traffic. Now, of course, when the user is off network um, with Zscaler Private Access, Zscaler Private Access can create multiple paths to applications. Uh, if I was accessing an application in New York, I would come in via the New York connector, and at the same time, I could access an application via the London connector and, and be present in the network in two places. And of course, that's going to, um, I wouldn't say break Active Directory, but it's going to cause Active Directory some challenges on understanding what's going on. So, um, it's important to understand how the DNS resolution works um, and how that functions across um, Zscaler Private Access as a whole to understand how we define Active Directory when we start to segment the network. So, so let's start um, here on the left-hand side and, and just run through what's going to happen. Um, and so this, this is very specific to Active Directory, but it, it can be applied in general to any DNS query when you've got a wildcard application segment. So I've got a wildcard application segment, star.domain.com, um, and the user is going to do a DNS SRV lookup for LDAP TCP domain.com. So it's a server lookup. It's saying, give me the, the, the details for, for, for my LDAP service. Um, I'm going to want to talk to it on TCP, and it's in the domain.com um, domain. Um, so, so the wildcard domain is going to match an application segment, um, and so the, the client is going to send a request through its um, tunnel to the Paris um, um, uh, Zen that the user is connected to, and say, "Okay, well, um, what what should I do with this? You know, does this thing exist? Is this something I can um, connect to?" Go ahead and, uh, and and figure it out. And the, the, the Paris Zen is going to look at the policy and say, yeah, startupdomain.com. Yes, this is a valid user. All your policy applies. And what it's going to do is it's going to talk to the dispatcher, which is a CA function. And the CA is going to look at that wildcard domain and it's going to say, ah, OK, well, um, the connectors in New York, London, and Sydney, they're all part of the, the server group or the connector group that's associated with the server group that's associated with that application segment. So all of those will be uh, able to participate in this DNS process. And so the dispatcher is then going to say to all of these connectors across these control channels, the New York connector's got its control channel to the New York Zen, uh, London connector to the London Zen, and the Sydney connector to the Sydney Zen. And across those control channels, those will be asked to do the DNS resolution for this SRV um, record. 
And so um, the, the connectors will, will create their DNS, and obviously it's important that each of these connectors is pointing to the, the local DNS servers, and those are your Active Directory uh, DNS, to be able to resolve it. Um, and, you know, obviously there's some caching that goes on, but let's talk at first principles. If the thing is not in the, in the cache, we're going to query all of these and the connectors will resolve them. Um, the connectors will all return their results back to the dispatcher and say, hey, I'm, I'm able to, to resolve it. This is the response I've got. Um, and so, um, you know, obviously we deploy these things in pairs and in most cases, um, there'll be a pair of connectors in all of these, and um, here we've got three connector groups, um, so three connectors could all be queried. So one connector in each group will be um, queried and will return its results. There is a unique case where a customer might only deploy one connector, which is associated with that connector group. Obviously, that's not best practices. It's against our SLA. And, you know, you might also think, well, it could be that the other connector is down. It's in a reboot state. So... You know, we, they're, they're, uh, if there's only one uh, connector group, then we will query both connectors in the group to make sure that we've got uh, appropriate responses. Um, so the, the response comes back. If it's not in cache, then the first one to respond is what's returned to the user. Um, so this, this could actually end up in a, you know, almost a suboptimal response because... Um, if, if the user is connected to Paris it's in the middle of the day in Paris, well, the New York node might be unloaded because, you know, most of the users in New York might be asleep or Sydney will be unloaded because it's coming into their evening. So you might not get the fastest response from London if the Active, domain, the active Directory domain controller is loaded or the connector is loaded. You know, from a response time perspective, these things are a bit quicker and they might return the result. So the result to underscore LDAP underscore TCP dot domain dot com should resolve, uh, respond with all domain controllers um, that are in the Active Directory. So the user gets a response um, and the user will then try those domain controllers in turn. Now at that point, the user is actually making a, a TCP connection to those domain controllers and that should then enumerate and take the, the, best, the best path. Um, so, so what happens if the, the response is already in the cache? Well, if the response is already in the cache, if it's less than 15 minutes, it's going to return the, the cache response. Um, and it'll return the cache response from the closest connector to the user at that point. So it's important. If it's unknown um, and it's the very first request, then potentially Sydney will be the fastest one to respond and that is returned to the user. The second time the user makes the request, well, at this point, the dispatcher has that detail in cache. And actually, we now know that the London node can resolve it. And London is closest to the user because the user is connected to Paris node. So it's this response that will come back to the user. So first request, you could get um, the suboptimal response. Subsequent requests, you will then get um, the, the, the more optimal one. Um, so we've, we've, we've gone through the DNS process, the DNS res response comes back to the user, the user um, will then make, uh, and then understands the domain controllers. Now from an Active Directory standpoint then, the user is going to try and log into Active Directory. Um, and even though the user has made the DNS resolution for underscore LDAP TCP, the user actually makes a, um, a UDP request and it's, um, it's called CLDAP, it's a connectionless LDAP. Um, and what will actually happen is it'll make a uh, connection to the to the domain controller that's been returned in that um, server record, um, and will you know return back a number of uh, domain controllers. It'll make a connection as LDAP request to those domain controllers, and at that point it'll egress with the source IP address of the connector to the domain controller, um, and that domain controller will then see the source IP address and say. Okay, you're trying to bind to Active Directory. You're asking, you're basically asking which domain controller is available um, to to authenticate me now based on my source IP address. And you can see that these that's where the source IP address becomes really um, important. So in this case, you know, the user is going to connect to the domain controller in London um, and make that connectionless LDAP response uh, request. Says, who can authenticate me? 
Um, and the response that comes back goes, hey, it's the domain controller in London. Um, here, is the, uh, here is the FQDN, and this is the port that you should connect to. Um, and because of that, the user will then make a TCP connection to that specific domain controller to authenticate it, return the net logon server, and the user is then seen as being in that site. So the user will be told you're in the site that is London. So really important that that, that process is followed. And it's really important that when you define your, if you go from a wildcard policy of star.domain.com to start to segment your network and say, okay, here are my Active Directory servers and create an application segment. You create an application segment for your domain controllers that covers all of the connector groups. So even if the user is trying to access the domain controller in New York, then you know the, the London connector, the New York connector, and the Sydney connectors are all in that, uh, that group because the user might go uh, in to London to access the domain controller in New York and the domain controller in New York will then say, oh, your source IP address is the London connector, therefore I'm gonna send you to the London domain controller to process all of your net logon, uh, all of your uh, Kerberos ticketing, all of your group policy. So uh, all of your uh, servers should be in the same uh, application segment, or you might want to break them out into different application segments, you know, application segment for New York, application segment for London, application segment for your Sydney domain controllers, but they should all reference all connector groups or they should have the same connector groups um, across them. Um, if you don't do it, it's entirely possible that Sydney could, could suddenly get, um, get all of the traffic and that's suboptimal. Um, and so we want to make sure that um, we, we, we load balance this traffic correctly. Now, what happens after that? Well, so, so the user's um, able to connect to the domain controller. We've obviously talked about CLDAP and LDAP, uh, port, uh, port 389 on TCP and UDP. Um, the user's then going to try and get their group policy. How does that functionality work? And that's where uh, RPC starts to come in, remote procedure call. So I'm going to come out of this and I'm going to jump into uh, my administration interface and just kind of run you through this. So here is my auto discovery. This kind of covers everything that I that I that I don't know about my domain. My domain is welshgeek.net. I'm going to zoom in slightly on this, make it a bit easier for you to see. Um, and this covers everything from port one six five five three five for TCP and UDP. Because it doesn't include an IP um, address range. Um, I'm happy to do one to six five five three five. If it was in uh, IP ranges, I'd obviously exclude um, UDP fifty three and TCP fifty three for zone transfer because we don't want DNS being intercepted specifically at, at an IP address. Um, so I'm able to to do that. If you just want DNS resolution, you can just set this to TCP and UDP port one, and that will just enable the DNS functionality to occur once you're fully segmented of your network. Um, now, I've only got one domain controller. My domain controller is dc2.welshgeek.net. So, so when we do that um, uh, LDAP connection and CLDAP connection, um, or to start off with, the DNS resolution is going to hit here. That SRV record is going to return dc2.welshgeek.net, and it's going to return um, you know, the port 389 for you to connect to. Uh, once I've done that and I've, I've gone off and I start to connect to my ticket, um, I'm going to do things like, and I need to make sure we've got these ports in there. It's going to do a um, an RPC call, so that's port one three five, one port that I've just realised I've missed out on that. Um, there's some SIFS traffic or SMB traffic, uh, which is TCP four four five, so we want that in there as well. Okay, so so we're on the workstation now. And what we want to check is, can I get my uh, group policy? So let's do a GP update slash force. Um, and it's going to do all of the things we were just talking about. It's um, doing the DNS resolution. Um, it's going to identify um, which, which server can authenticate me. And it's going to try and bind to that server and, uh, and do all of those things. And, and now we see it's failed. And it's failed because it, could, it says it couldn't resolve the computer name. But actually what's happening is it can't can't connect. So let's um, let's actually take a look at this. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a, we're going to do nl test um, slash dc list and then my domain welshgeek.net. 
it's going to say R. Um, it's got the list of the domain controllers. It says, okay, well, um, it did that um, connection. It did the CLDAP lookup, um, and it saw the, the dc2.welshkeep.net as my domain controller, and it says it cannot DS bind to it. Uh, RPC call failed. Well, we know we had RPC um, configured in there. Um, what was actually going on? So let's um, let's actually do something a bit more technical to figure out what's going on. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to start a packet capture. So my packet capture is running, and I'm going to run that same query. Got the list. It's taking a little bit longer here to fail, and it failed to bind. So we've we've done that, uh, and let's stop the packet capture and. Uh, we're in the directory, so we start the directory, and here is my packet capture. We're really only interested in the LWF capture. Everything else is uh, is outside of the adapter. Um, so we can see here, uh, here's my query response, um, and we see this traffic here, which is the RPC traffic. Um, and more specifically, if we call, come down here to the endpoint mapper, the client made a, a request um, and said, "What what can um, map? What should I map to 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 to, to get my Active Directory um, context?" And here in the response, uh, maybe it's not that response. Let's scroll down a little bit further. Uh, response. Um, it's giving me a TCP port. I actually ignore the IP address because we know that the, the host name. Um, and here it's saying TCP port 5003. Five and it's saying, okay, on, on demand, I'm gonna allocate you this port on the, um, on the domain controller where you're gonna get your group policy from. And that wasn't included in the list. Now, by default, and this is, there's a couple of sites out there that give you this detail. By default, Active Directory um, for, for a remote procedure call runs on port 49,000 to 65,535. So you could take the default um, and, and open up that, that quite large address range um, on, on, your, um, uh, on your domain controller here. So I could come in here and I could say um, add more and I could go 49,000 to 65535. Um, but what I've actually done is I've made a decision that I want to reduce the um, how large that port range is. Um, so how to configure dynamic port range allocation to work with firewalls? Yeah, we're a, we're a firewall. So we've got this uh, HK local machine um, software, Microsoft RPC Internet um, Hive, and we've added a couple of extra um, keys in here. So I'm just coming across here to my domain controller, and here. Uh, here is the uh, the Hive HK Local Machine software, Microsoft uh, RPC Internet. And I've got these these here. So I've said, okay, the ports are five thousand to six thousand. I want to open up, and I'm going to uh, these two parameters to just say these are the ports I want you to allocate um, when you get an RPC connection. So I'm going to come back across to my private access, and I'm actually going to say. 5,000 to port uh, 6,000 and click save. So those ports will now um, be open towards my domain controller um, when the RPC connection is made. So let's come back to my, my workstation. Um, we know everything else is working. Um, and so now I can run that NL test again and that port will be open and it says, ah, oh, great. You've actually made the connection to the domain controller your site is in England. Um, England is defined as a site, and my connector is in that subnet. It's in that site. So uh, Active Directory is able to uh, return the site. And it's worth doing this um, on, on the connectors to, to, to figure out which ones are able to, to resolve and making sure the connectors are properly in those sites for that to work. So now that that's worked, I can come back here and run my GP update slash force. Um, and I could take another packet capture and see that port mapping going on. But at this point, I'm now able to um, do the DNS resolution. I'm able to 
do the CLDAP connection, the connection is LDAP UDP port, which means that my uh, site is known, and I'm going to be directed towards the domain controller, which is then able to authenticate me, um, issue me Kerberos tokens and everything like that, plus be able to provide my group policy. And group policy is going to be provided because I can make an RPC connection to it. Um, through my RPC connection, um, I'm returned a port, an ephemeral port to connect to. In this case, it was, I think, 5003. I can now make that port 5003 connection to my domain controller, and my group policy object is now returned to me. So we'll just give this a little second or two more to return. My computer policy has been properly updated. My group policy has been delivered to my client, and I'm all good. So I hope that was useful. I hope it was useful to understand the DNS process that goes on within um, Zscaler Private Access and how DNS directly affects what Active Directory is doing, how Active Directory is functioning, and what that does for uh, returning group policy objects to a client. Thanks very much.